You know, for the last few seasons of Oz that I've been watching, I've been watching the episodes while working out. I don't really like exercising without doing something else constructive, maybe listening to a lecture or something. But while I'm there, I've got me dumbbells, and for the past few seasons, Oz has been on while my sweaty self is popping a hernia trying to squeeze out 10 sit-ups. I was still giving the show my full attention, but I think it's worth mentioning, because it's not something I've done before, nor would ever consider doing with something like The Sopranos, Breaking Bad or The Wire. But had I watched Oz and not done anything else while I was doing so, I can see myself perhaps becoming a little frustrated with the show. Calling season 6 a waste of time is probably a stretch, but the glory days of Oz are long gone and the veteran pioneer is now over the hill, desperately needing a bullet to be put out of its misery. Season 6 of the show is similar in quality to season 5, probably a bit worse. I don't know, there's something about it that makes it feel like an epilogue, a late arrival to the party rather than part of the crowd. Maybe it's because by this point the shock factor is all Oz really has going for it, but nothing shocking happens in this final season. It was interesting to see how Oz would structure itself, given our narrator Augustus Hill was killed at the end of the previous season. Sometimes annoying, sometimes poignant, sometimes pointless, Hill's breaking of the fourth wall is nonetheless an integral part of Oz, and I was wondering how season 6 would do it different. And the answer? Well, they didn't do much different. He's still there, narrating as normal, except he tells us he's crossed over to the other side. That, and that each episode of the season features a special guest narrator, a character from previous seasons who has died, even guys like Dino and Shirley Bellinger, which was nice if ultimately underwhelming, as with many creative decisions in the show. I mean, why not have the narrating characters talk about things which are relevant to both them and the current story in the show, like Shirley? She was executed, and a lot of season 6 deals with Cyril's execution case. Wouldn't that be a perfect opportunity for Shirley to weigh in on the death penalty? Maybe her thoughts on how she felt about her own execution? Some of the main storylines of this season include, as mentioned, Cyril being sentenced to death and Ryan trying to appeal his case. I know crazy stuff has happened in history and continues to happen today, but I wonder how realistic it was for someone who had Cyril's mental state to be sentenced to death. But then again, him even being in Oz is eye-raising. Ribadau gets a job in the library and starts a friendship with the new female librarian. A firm comes in and exploits some of the prisoners by giving them low-paid jobs as telemarketers, with Bear Redding trying to persuade his boys to ditch slinging drugs and take up legitimate work, as he shook after the death of Augustus. Robson, who was kicked out of the Aryan Brotherhood because he may have implanted gums from a black man, becomes a bitch for protection, and Beecher is up for parole again and may just get a chance to leave Oz. You know how a drug addict has to take higher shots and more frequent hits of the stuff he's on to get the same rush as time goes by? Oz feels the same way. It feels like it struggles to hit those highs of seasons of old, so it ratches things up and throws everything at the wall to give you that same shock factor. I mean, I know it's theatre, best exemplified by an actual theatre production the inmates are involved in in the final episode, but you've got psycho nurses killing their patients, corrupt CEOs paying people to bump off people who work at Oz, and corruption that went all the way to the governor. You just kind of knew that Warden Glynn was going to snuff it. You just kind of felt that they would kill even him off because they were running out of things which would be considered shocking enough. The death of Saeed, one of the all-time great characters, felt like we got shortchanged because it just felt utterly pointless. There was literally no point. It wasn't tied to some greater story. The assailant had no great reason to kill him aside from the fact that Saeed told him the universe will end in a billion years or something. And Saeed is quickly replaced by Arif. Beecher's father is killed. And Beecher must be pretty jaded to tragedy as he reacts to it like he's been told he's been made redundant from his job. Remember when I said the character of Omar grows on you? Well, he just pointlessly dies too, at the hands of the same dope who got Saeed. Chris Keller gets it too, unsurprisingly. Killing him must have been one of the main reasons to bring him back after his exit in season 4. Although to be fair, they did give him a fair chunk to do when he came back. Schillinger finally gets his, but it's pretty underwhelming as it's a simple shank to the belly region that does him. I mean, isn't it standard operating procedure to get shanked every month or two at Oz? To think that's all it took to finally kill Schillinger. But with all these characters dying, it of course feels like a season that knows it's its last season. 
I don't know the behind the scenes, but I have heard there are a few unreleased episodes of a season 7. It makes sense because with the way Oz ends, it's a bit weird. So many storylines went nowhere and the most rational explanation is that there would have been further seasons. Burr Redding mentions to Ryan to use his mother's sin to his advantage in regards to a new inmate who used to be romantically involved with Ryan's mother. He doesn't understand what Redding means. Redding tells him to think on it. And this is literally never brought up again. There's a half-baked corruption scandal involving the governor, which goes nowhere, but felt like a real tease for a future season. Alvarez starts a romance with a dead inmate's wife. A new inmate, played by Bobby Cannavale, is introduced with ambitious plans to take over Emerald City, with the show ending like an episode later. Just loads of different things that didn't have an ending. In another show, maybe like The Sopranos, I wouldn't have minded as that is a show where some storylines are tied up and some remain open, as is life. But Oz always feels a bit more serialised and episodic, so we're left shortchanged with many of the storylines. And it's not like there wasn't time to flesh out storylines. A lot of season 6 feels like repetition. Beach's parole, which we already saw last season. Busmalis and his wedding, again. There was a long emotional build-up to Cyril's execution, with the whole of Emerald City even in union with each other, showing solidarity for Cyril, and then at the last minute the execution gets delayed. But all this happens again a few episodes later, with a little less effort from the showrunners, and he actually dies this time around. So what was the point of the delay? The initial segment was really interesting and cathartic, and it would have been really emotional had he died at that point. And Paul Beecher. Can't this guy catch a break, or does he only exist to be tortured by the writers? I can't remember if there was even an episode in between when he was finally freed and then put back into Oz, and now he's possibly facing the death penalty unjustly by the end of the show. And again, the initial release of Beecher doesn't hit like it should, because we already saw this play out in the fake out release in season 5. There were some interesting things explored. A group of men in therapy coming to terms with the fact that they had been raped had potential, and Hill's very last line about the who and why of a man who dies in prison being the important part kind of put Oz as a show into perspective as to what this show is about, to give these faceless, nameless guys a voice. I feel like Oz is so desperate to make you feel miserable, it does so at the cost of its own stature. Every time a character gets a happy ending and there's no realistic reason for something to go wrong, a contrived plot is thrown in to screw things up. Six years later and McManus is still an idiot who doesn't learn from his mistakes. Really, it's all in the story, the writing. That's what makes or breaks Oz. That's what separates the first half of the show from the second. Nothing else pretty much changes the acting, the style, but the nosedive in quality writing is what damages the show. Among other things, you just really do have to turn your brain off at times, especially with season 6. Like, how is Schillinger allowed anywhere near a stage play, let alone allowed to play the lead role, play a part where he beats up a black guy, given his background, and co-star with Beecher? But the nonsensical stuff is not worth getting into, otherwise every review of season 6 will turn into a roast instead. Season 6 reeks of the writers being burnt out and out of ideas, throwing random things out there that they hope the audience will like, like Quern's coming back to take over Oz, but it wasn't the greatest of endings. So there you have it, let me know what you think of Oz, and if you want me to make more videos on the show, let me know in the comments below. I do have ideas, although it's a bit difficult I think to make videos on Oz because going back and finding the right scenes you need to rewatch for arguments and analysis is like finding a needle in a haystack with just how fast paced the show is and how many characters and storylines it has. Also, let me know what you want me to watch next. In all likelihood, I'll probably be taking a break from watching a series for YouTube analysis for a while. After doing Boardwalk Empire and then The Wire, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Fargo and Oz, with a few smaller shows in between like Tulsa King sprinkled in, I kind of want to go back to my first love, movies, and watching them for fun, which I've been neglecting. Thanks for watching.